want to have your hair tied back to start off this look and I've already done a bruise on my shoulder and then a few scrapes on my knuckles. If you want, I've already got a tutorial for these. And next time I'm gonna start with some redness on my cheeks. If I get even a little bit hot and bothered, especially if I'm doing something like judo, my face goes very red on the cheeks. So that's what I'm going to be accentuating today. And then I'm going to be applying some lip balm. We're gonna be going back with this red color and we're gonna be adding a slight flush of color to your lips. Not too much, but just enough to look like you've gotten your heart racing. After that, I'm going to add some redness around the eye because this is the eye that we're going to paint later on to make it look like it's just been punched. So we have to start off with that redness, especially in the outer corner of the eye, which is the one which is closest to where you'll have been hit. So that is going to get a little irritated. But then we're going to move on to the broken nose. I'm going to be using some scar wax. I'm not massively fond of this stuff just because of how complicated it is to blend out. But something I got my hands on recently, which is amazing, is this little silicone pad. It has a texture which is very similar to the skin molded on the surface so that I can press this over the scar wax and then the scar wax isn't going to look artificially smooth. Next, I'm going to create a cut across the nose, lift up the skin so that it looks like it's been broken out. And then what we're going to do is going back to that very light pinky color is I'm going to add some of that redness around the edge, use the brighter red right through that break that I've made across the nose bridge, blend it out again. I'm going to push that bridge to the side to make it look like the bone has actually been broken and pushed to the side. Add a little scrape underneath. This part we're going to paint bright red and then we're going to move on to the cut on the forehead. I'm going to be using a premixed silicone, blending out the edges, and then before it dries, you want to run any kind of sculpting tool right through it to create that cut. And then it's pretty much the same technique on the lips. You want to put a little bit of the silicone, quickly blend it out, this stuff dries very, very quickly. And then before it dries completely, get the palette knife and just go through it to create a cut. And then we're going to add the detail to the cuts. First off, we're going to start with that very pale pink color on the cut wheel. Then I'm going to move on with a bright red which is going to go directly through the cuts, exactly the same on the lip. You want that bright red, some pinkness around it, but on the lips I'm going to do it in the opposite way that I did on the eye. I'm going to start off with that bright red and then go over it with the pink. And I'm going to try and go in a bit of a C shape. You need to think of it as the direction you've been punched, so that there'll be a C shape around where the edge of the fist hit the lip. I'm going to go through the lip cut again with that bright red, and then add what's ever left on the brush just along that curve of my eye and then blend it out we want to make the eye look a lot more irritated than it looks currently I'm going to keep building up that salmon and that red and the main thing I want to focus on is any area of my bone structure which sticks out a little bit more those are the areas which are more likely to get hit so those are the areas I'm going to make look more red and irritated I'm also going to be using more of those colors on the outer corner of the eye as close to the lashes as possible more salmon more red more irritation in general and now we're going to move on to the fake blood I'm going to be using food coloring as usual and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of that right down the cuts. There isn't going to be much of it on the brow bone, but I'm going to be putting quite a lot of it on the lips and on the nose. For the lip, I just want to have a little bit of blood at the top of that cut, but the most of it is going to be focused at the bottom and it's got to trail down onto my teeth as well. Now, because it's food coloring, it's perfectly safe to put in your mouth and it does taste a little bit better than most fake blood that I've tried. For the nose, again, I'm going to put blood right through the center and then have some of it trailing down. So this is what it looks after I've done all that. And now we have to move on to the slightly more messy but quite easy part to do, and that is the fake sweat. There are two things you can use. You can use a hair oil for your hair, which is what I'm gonna be using. So on the plus side, once I wash this off, my hair should feel pretty good. And I'm mainly gonna add this a little bit over the hair, but primarily around the roots, because that's the part where it shows up the most. And you know when you see someone who sweats a lot and their hair sticks to their forehead, that's what we want to try and replicate. Now for the face, I'm going to be using some fake sweat, but what you can use is glycerin, it's essentially the same thing. And you want to dabble that primarily on the highlights of your face, but if you want to go full out, just dabble it everywhere. But I'm mainly gonna be focusing on the center of the forehead, the cheeks, the arch of the nose, and the chin. But other than that, you're done.